All right, so here's a recording of the uh, final exam question. Um, this is the, you know, this is my version of it, um, which is only one of the many variations. All right, so what we are going to do is to copy and paste, or actually cut and paste the C code. So this way, you know, there won't be any C code to interfere in the assembly code. So here's all the C code, control X to cut, put it into uh, online GDB. And then we just have to select all over here and then control V to paste over. Specify it is a C language and then we click save. <clears throat> and this way, you know, we can save it on in the cloud storage. And I'll give it a name of 2020 fall uh final exam okay and there we go all right so the first thing we're going to do is to see what the program is going to do set up a breakpoint click debug the program should compile and now we are at the uh, breakpoint and we can take a look at the buffer which is the only local variable at this point um, actually, the program is not running yet. Yeah, so we just have to run it, you know, R to run, and then we get to the breakpoint, and we can see how the buffer has a few bytes on it. Um, and I think the last one is this one here. That's our null character. So what this really is doing, okay, you know, it's better to print it here. So print. Uh, in hexadecimal because you know the documentation of the C code explains you know what it is encoding so we are basically um, oh I can mute the mic itself there we go because otherwise you know you, you're gonna hear um, an echo uh, effect so there we go um, print X buffer so we can see you know the the first move is to move from pole 0 to pole 1 and then the second move is to move from pole 0 to pole 2 and then we move from pole 1 to pole 2 that concludes you know the three actions when we only have two disks so that's kind of what this program does um, and you know you can even increase the number uh, to 3 and it will still work so in this case uh, we are increasing. Let me just double check and make sure that. Oh, okay. N is the first one. Okay. So we change the number of disks from two to three, and then we keep the the, uh, the breakpoint. Debug the program again. Run it, and then print slash x, which is hexadecimal buffer, and this time it uses seven bytes. The eighth byte is a null terminator. So the first move is to move from uh, pole 0 to pole 2, pole 0 to pole 1, pole 2 to pole 1, pole 0 to pole 2, pole 0 to pole, excuse me, pole 0 to pole 1. Excuse, I take it back. Pole 1 to pole 0, pole 1 to pole 2, pole 0 to pole 2, and that concludes the sequence. So that's kind of what the program does, and your assembly code should do the same. So now that I have this um, C program in um, online GDB, so I can go back to my assembly code, which is you know, really just a. I'm using Google uh, Google Document you know as a text editor, uh, which is okay. It works fine for that purpose too. And you know, depending on your preferences, I personally prefer to use um, a font size that has a fixed width. Some people are okay with it not um, doing that, which is perfectly okay too, but I just personally prefer that. And I also prefer a smaller uh, font size. So once again, you know, um, you can do whatever you want to, um, you know, uh, to make it work. Um, so to keep this formatting, I am going to go to format and then go to paragraph style, go to normal text, and then update normal text to match. So this way, you know, um, every single line is going to look like that. 
And then the other thing that will also be helpful is to change the line spacing. So instead of using uh, the 1.15, I prefer to use single line spacing. Um, and also to make sure that we don't have any space after the paragraph. So I can go here and double check everything looks good. All right, so now we can you know, finally get started with the coding. So once again, the formatting is really personal preferences. Um, you know, you definitely don't need to do that. Um, I also like to show, um, let's see. Huh. I thought there's a way so that it doesn't um, show the margins because the margins are basically useless in this case. All right, so maybe not. Okay, so here we go. You know, we get started coding. Um, all right, so we start with a no arm instruction, and the typical way I do this is to jump to main, and the main is a label here. Main stops with a halt instruction. So this is kind of the shell of the program. Um, then I also put in an LDID zero. You can miss this one. It's okay. It's not a big deal, because when we reset the processor, all registers go to zero. So this is kind of the minimum um, to you know as a shell for the program. So now I can start to um, let me go back to online GDB, make sure I stop this and then save the code first. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save it again. Okay. So this way I can come back in and you know get through the same code again. All right, so the first subroutine we need to implement is rec, okay? Or record. Okay, so we copy and paste it. So copy and pasting is not generally recommended, but if it's from your own original document, it's okay. So the other thing that we do here is commenting out the Z code so it won't interfere with the assembly code. So now I get to um, define rec, okay? And right away, I will also you know, write the uh, return sequence of instructions, which is LD, BD, okay? Now you can use C2, okay? You know, that's fine, but A is not going to be okay because rec is supposed to return a scalar value, which is going to be stored in register A. So when you cannot use register A to specify the um, return address here. Increment D and then a JMP B. There we go. So now I can go in between to actually put in the code that I need to put into. Um, I personally like to put in a picture of what the stack would look like. So it's going to have the return address as the lowest instruction, uh, lowest byte of everything on the stack. Next char is next one, left is then next, and then right after that. So now I can go in and define some labels because it is handy to have labels to do all this. So I will have rec underscore return address defined to be zero because that's where the stack pointer should be pointing at, at the entry point of the subroutine. And I don't have any local variables either. And then the next one is next char. It is, um, you can, you know, I made sure that we do not have the same parameter name between the subroutines, but um, just to make sure that we don't have that problem, we can always have a prefix. So this way, there's no way that we can end up with a problem. And then the next one is left. So we got rec underscore left is rec underscore next char one plus. And then the last one is uh, right. Okay, so right is here. So this is where I would, you know, look at how the labels are defined and make sure that you know you understand the ordering of things on the stack including the return address and all the parameters all right so with all of these defined and i do not have any local variables i can really get started with the first statement it's an uh, it's an assignment which means i need to compute the left hand side first and then put it onto the right hand side Okay, so we'll go ahead and do this. Um, so very typically, I'm just going to use LDI um, rec left to get to the offset, add AD to get to the address, and then we have um, LDAA. Okay, so as per the instruction of the exam, every time we have a memory read or write operation, you should comment what is being read. Okay, so you can basically say, you know, A is now, 
um, next char, which is the um, parameter. And before this, a is the address of next char, and then before that, a is the offset to next char from where d points to. Okay. All right. So now that we got next char, um, actually, I got it reversed, didn't I? Um, I believe it's not uh, next char. It is left. Okay, so all of these are supposed to be left. There we go. All right, so ne now we need to perform um, left shift by four, which is done by add ADD, add AA, sorry, add AA, add AA, add AA, and one last time, add AA. So now A is left and then left shifted by four bits because each time we add A to A, we're doubling A and doubling A is has the same effect as left shifting by one bit. And now we can handle right, okay? So right, let's put it into register B, okay? So we'll LDI B with rec underscore right. And then we add AD. And so at this point, register B has the address of right. And then when we do LD, whoops, I forgot this is supposed to be B. And then we say LDB B, oops, uh, B now has the value of the parameter right. All right, so now we need to do an OR operation here. Um, we can do it either way. Uh, we can do an OR AB or OR BA. Doesn't matter which one we do it. You know, it's just that you know we have to remember which way it is. So now that we use uh, OR AB, A is now left um, left shifted by four bits, um, bitwise OR with B. Some of you have add instead of OR. So your code has to match the question that you have. This is one way that I can tell whether people are copying from somebody else's answer. So if I see um, that the C code is an or, but in the assembly code is a plus, is an add, I have a problem with that, okay? All right, so now that we have the right-hand side, we need to do the left-hand side. So the left-hand side can reuse register B because it has not been, uh, I mean, it's not useful anymore. So we'll go ahead and do this. So B is now the address of next char, and we need to do a LDBB so that B is now um, next char itself and not the address of. Now we can store to where register B points to from register A because after all we are supposed to store to um, where next char points to. So this needs to be commented because we are storing. So every load and every store instructions should be commented because the instruction says so. All right, so now that we are done with the first statement, we need to work with the second statement. So the way we work the second statement, there's a way to optimize this because we just need to get back to next char. So instead of doing it, um, oh, actually, it's okay, it's still in register B. So we have to, we can increment register, well, it's supposed to be in the return value. So we can do a CPR uh, AB. So this way, register A is next char. And then we just have to increment it, increment A, so that register A is now next char plus one, and that specifies the return value. And then we already got the uh, return sequence of instructions here. So now is a good time to at least go through the assembler just to see if this works or not. 
So we control A, control C, and then go to the assembler. And I'm not going to use the secret assembler because, um, well, I mean, the exam is over, so there's really not much concern to paste it here. Actually, the first thing I do is to erase column A, the entire column A, and then paste it in. Okay. And we kind of have to be careful because if I or if I accidentally put in a tab character, uh, that can really kind of mess things up. And then we go to the RAM file. Everything looks good. All right. So the code cannot really run at this point. I'm just checking for um, um, errors that can be spotted pretty easily by the assembler. And we do not have any errors. So the next one is the more difficult one. Okay, which is pretty much the meat of the entire exam question is to implement Hanoi. Okay, now we can if you look at Hanoi, it, it takes up a lot of lines, but it really is not that difficult. Okay, so let me just kind of explain why I say that. Okay, so we'll paste this in, and at this time we'll uh, we'll insert um, slash slash in front of every single line. Um, you know, just to comment out. Okay, we definitely have some tab characters, unfortunately. So, and I don't think uh, we can. Okay, let me just see if this works. Okay, if it doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to um, not do it this way, which is gonna be a little bit annoying, but um, it's okay. So we take this and then we go back here, erase um, column A entirely, go to row one, paste it in. Yeah, so it doesn't, no, nope, it's actually okay. It ignored all the tab characters. Um, and the errors are actually fine because, you know, V really is an unknown mnemonic. Okay, so this is good. I mean, this means, you know, I can just, you know, comment out every single line. And the reason why I do it this way is so that in the assembly code, I can sort of refer to the C code um, as I work on the assembly code. So you'll see what I mean by that. So we can do it. Um, you know, as I go through this really kind of manual process, I'm just explaining that there are several ways to work on the assembly code of this question. Um, obviously, the first way is the boring way, which is, you know, just do things the usual way. Um, so, the first thing we need to do is to figure out, not even worrying about assembly code, is how the C code gets it done. So basically what happens here is this is the overall Hanoi. I mean, not counting the um, ternary expression. This is the overall call of Hanoi, which is going to be the last one because it depends on the second call. So the second call needs to happen before the outermost. Okay, The mid has to happen before the outermost, but the mid cannot happen until the innermost is done. So this really is the first call that we need to handle. This is the first one. Whatever it returns becomes the last argument in this case of the mid call, and then whatever that returns becomes the last argument of the uh, third call. In other words, this is our first, this is our second, and this is our last call. And you can also notice that the order of uh, VFT are different for each one, and that's pretty much the nature of um, uh, Tower of, of Hanoi is, you know, we change the order of the the from, to, and the via pose um, in the three steps, you know, when we do this recursively. All right, so with the, with the uh, C code intact here, I'm going to uh, do the usual thing, okay? So this is the entry code. And then the exit code is going to be exactly the same as before. So we can just kind of copy and paste. And since I'm copying and pasting within the same document, it is fine. There's not, no problem doing this. Okay, so the usual way is to define the offsets, okay? So we'll go ahead and do that. So we got Hanoi return address defined as zero because we don't have any local variables. Then we have Hanoi underscore n, 
being Hanoi underscore return address one plus. Then we got Hanoi underscore F, which is the from PO. It is Hanoi underscore N one plus. And then we have Hanoi underscore V, which is the via PO. It is Hanoi F one plus. Then we have the two PO, okay, Hanoi underscore T. It is Hanoi underscore V one plus. And then we have the last one, which is Hanoi underscore W, which is Hanoi underscore T one plus. So now we got all the offsets defined. And you know, we can do it the normal way. So I'll do it the normal way at least once, okay, which is gonna be uh the last call. Okay, so the last call is this one. And we're going to call it, you know, using a very conventional way of pushing the parameters on the stack. All right, so not very exciting, so it seems, at least when it comes to W. Okay, so we have LDI, um, and we can use register A for the most part. Okay, so we have Hanoi underscore W, and A is offset to W, add AD. A is now the address of W, and then we have a LD um, A A, which is going to be A is now actually the value of parameter W, and then somebody asked me, okay, you know, throughout the code, um, that person used parentheses around the first uh, register, but not around the second register. Um, I'm going to have to take points off, okay, because by this time, I really expect people to understand the syntax and how each instruction is written, yeah, just because we have used it already a lot, okay. There really is not any excuse not to know it at this point. Besides, this is something that the assembler can catch, okay, so um, I, I, I got to take points off, okay, you know, this, th there's no... Uh, there's no excuse. Um, all right, so now that we got um, W in register A, we push it on the stack. So to push it on the stack is document D, STDA, and as I said, any stack related operation needs to be explained. So we are just pushing W on stack, which is the last argument. It's going to be about the same for V, for T, for F, and then for N minus one, sort of. Okay, so we'll go ahead and copy and paste, you know, within this code. Okay, except we have to change. This is not W anymore, and this time it's V. And then we paste again. This time it is. Oh, what is it? Um, T. So. Uh, so what I'm looking for here is um, pushing the arguments in reverse order. Okay, so you know if people are pushing the arguments in the forward order, I will definitely take points off. Okay, the next one is F. Okay, so we'll go ahead and paste here. This is going to be F, and then the last one is n minus one. So this is F, and the last one is n minus one, which means we need to get to n first. And once we get to N, okay, so I really need to fix the comments too. So we'll go ahead and fix these as we get through them. Okay, so when A is N, we just need a decrement A at this point to so that A is N minus 1. So this is definitely another place you know, where I would look to see if people know how to do this instead of just, you know, um, storing, you know, Hanoi underscore n minus one. And let me just fix all the comments first, okay, because I don't want to leave the comments um, not matching the code. So we'll go ahead and fix all of these. Oh, okay, that one is, belongs to the previous one. There we go. And this is T, T, and T, and then we got F, F, and F, and then we got N. Oh, this is still F, 
and then we got n and n okay so i think we got everything here except for the first push is was changed and that was my mistake because i didn't quite see the uh the border between um, pushing arguments okay and i know when some of you are screaming already and go like but tag you're forgetting that after we push something on the stack the offset is wrong it's one off yep that is definitely true so this is now one off from where it's supposed to be this is now two off from where it is supposed to be and you can probably expect this one to be what three off and this one is now four off okay so this is also what i'm expecting people to you know this is where i would also allocate points is whether people understand that once you push something on a stack which involves a decrement d the offset that is represented in the symbol is no longer true because that one is assuming you know that we are looking at the stack pointer at the entry point of the subroutine but now that we have pushed additional items on the stack the stack pointer is pushed down or it's reduced already so the offset to get to the same argument is not going to be the same and we need to make adjustments to get to that okay so this is where i would be looking for you know okay do pe does do people understand how to do this okay and i'm going to kind of comment here because i jumped ahead of time a little bit okay so this is the innermost call because one thing i forgot to do was to implement the ternary operator okay or there are two ternary expressions I believe one person asked me, you know, whether um, this is really the way I wanted to structure the ternary expression. The answer is yes. Okay, that is how I want to organize the ternary expression. So, well, I didn't use any parentheses. So the next question is, is the ternary operator left associative or right associative? You can use Google. Okay, during the exam, you know, you can use Google because Google does not constitute interacting with somebody on the same day of the final exam. So you can use that. As it turns out, the ternary operator is right associative, which basically means it is equivalent of you know, treating um, this one here as a sub-expression of the, okay, I should say, I should say this is the sub-expression of the else of the first expression okay so that is how um, it is supposed to be implemented so we need to first check whether it is zero or not because this this exclamation point n is to confirm that n is false so if n is false it means n is zero and in that case we just want to return a zero if n is one we just want to return whatever the rec call is returning and if n is not zero and not one, then it will go for the recursive case. Okay, so that's basically what the um, ternary operator or ternary expressions are supposed to do. So now we go here and we are going to implement that. So LDI A Hanoi underscore N A is offset to N add AD. So now register A is um, the address of N, LDA A, okay. So now we know that register A is just the value of parameter N. So now we can do some comparison. The first one we're gonna do is AND AA, okay. That's one way to do it, not the only way, but you know, I like shortcuts when it makes sense and it is it just it's just a whole lot easier okay so and aa can be used okay jzi to basically say you know n is zero okay so when we proceed here that means n is not zero so as per the instruction of the exam whenever you use a whenever you use a conditional branch you have to explain what does it mean if it branches and what does it mean when it does not branch okay so when it does branch it means n really is zero and if it does not branch it means n is not zero okay so you have to comment this stuff here you know not only for your own sake but also because i asked for it okay 
All right, so if n is not zero, we got some extra stuff to do. But if an n is zero, it's pretty easy, okay? And you know, if n is zero, that means a is already zero. So we can have an unconditional branch here to, um, you know, ready to return. So we'll say Hanoi ready to return because um, you know, register a already has a zero in it. So we'll put that label right here. Um, this is Hanoi ready to return there we go all right so we got this case already taken care taken care of so now we need to look for the one and there's no shortcut in this case so we have to do LDI B1 and then do a compare which way you do it doesn't really matter because we're looking for an exact match of it, is it one or not. Okay, so you, whether you use CMP AB or BA, both will work. So we have a JZI again, and this time we have N is one. Okay, so that means, you know, if I do branch, it means N indeed is one. And that also means if I continue execution, N is not one. Okay, so n is 1, oh, n is not 1, is going to be the recursive call, so I'm going to stick the recursive call into this place. Okay, now this is going to be a lengthy copy and paste, but that's okay, because once again, we are copying and pasting, or in this case, cut and pasting within the same code. Okay, so we have this. And we also have to remember to do a JMPI to jump around the case when it is zero and also the case when it is one. So we have to do a JMPI to um, Hanoi ready to return. There we go. All right, so we still miss one label, which is N is one, put it here, LDI A1. And we don't need to jump to Hanoi ready to return in this case because it can fall right through to this label. So there's no need to do a um, JMPI to um, Hanoi ready to return. And technically speaking, this one is also not needed be because it will fall through to this particular JMPI. So it's going to work too. Okay, but. Um, I suppose I'm not going to mark it wrong this time, you know, if people code it like this without this particular JMPI, because they can argue and say, hmm, but it will fall through to this one. Okay, I can buy that. Okay, but it depends on how your code is structured. This is just how I like to structure the code at this point. All right. So now that we have handled, oh, we, oh, oh, wait, wait, hold on a second here. I forgot. I forgot. Sorry. Because when uh, n is 1, we are not returning a 1. We are returning uh, this call over here. OK, so excuse me. I got this wrong. All right, so when it is 1, this is it's not simple like this anymore because we have to do this. So I'm just putting in the comment here like this. So now I can just you know work on the code. So we have to push T and then we have to push F then push W and then call rec and then return. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, I forgot about one thing. You know, this is um, the next thing we need to do is to actually do the call, which I have not specified yet. OK, so let me this is the problem of me kind of being a little scattered. Then I just have to put a. Uh, note here to remind myself to do that because I really want to focus here. So we have it. load LDI a Hanoi underscore T uh, add 80 and uh, LD a a so a is T and then at this point a is the address of T um, then we have to push it on the stack decrement D S T D A and then we just have to kind of repeat this with the other two parameters okay the second parameter we have to push is F so we got F here we got the address of F we have actually the value of F and 
we have to come in here and say push F on the stack and also come in here and say we are pushing T on the stack. Alright, so one more parameter which is here and the last one is W. So once again we change everything to refer to W, W and W. There we go. And once again, you know, once we push one thing on the stack, the stack is off by one byte. Once we have pushed two things on the stack, everything is off by two bytes. So now we have to push the return address at this point. Um, so we have an LDI A uh, and then a dot six plus decrement D S T D A. And every time we store something on the stack, uh, we have to say what we are pushing on the stack. This is the return address. Now, okay, let me just kind of explain another thing about grading is if somebody just says, you know, right here, we push A on the stack and there's no prior explanation that A has the return address, I, I'm going to take points off, okay? Because, you know, the instruction also clearly states that we have to comment and relate the assembly code to C code and and just saying push A does not relate to C code. Okay, so you have to say to push, the, it's pushing the return address. So once we push the return address, we continue execution at the subroutine, which is rec in this case. When it comes back, we have two, we have three parameters still sitting on the stack or three arguments still sitting on the stack. So we have increment D, increment D, and then increment D to the allocate arguments on the stack. So every um, decrement and increment of the stack pointer D you know, should be explained to. Um, I did not explain these you know, decrement D because it is part of pushing, but the increment you know, on the other hand is not, it, they're standalone and they need to be explained in individually like that. Um, and that is okay. That means you know, we have just um, called return, I mean rec record. And whatever record is returning is in register A, and that's exactly where we want it because you know whatever re record is returning is what we want to return to the caller. So there's nothing in addition that we have to do here. All right, so now we can finally go back to the recursive case, okay, which is the fun one. Okay, so we can now finish the call first. This is the innermost call. So now we do the exact same sequence, which is LDI A dot six plus and then we do a decrement d s t d a and then explain that this is pushing the return address okay so you know if people forget to comment once in a while it's no big deal okay because there are plenty of pushing the return address on the stack in within this program okay so if people miss one or two i'm not gonna you know fuzz about it on the other hand, if that is never explained, then I have a problem with it, okay? All right, so now that it has returned, um, there are a few things we need to do. There are five bytes on the stack that belong to arguments. So in this case, it is better to do something like this um, to adjust the stack pointer. Um, because otherwise we need five increments, which takes up just two more bytes, three, yeah, it takes up two more bytes compared to this method. But this method doesn't need you to count the number of increments. So in that way, it is also nicer. Um, so we are now deallocating the arguments. There are five of them and they get all removed from the stack at the same time because we are basically adding five to the stack pointer. And then we have the register A containing the return value of the innermost recursive call. And we have to push it on the stack. Okay, so we have the decrement D and then we say STDA. And this time the explanation is very important. So we can just say push return value of innermost call to Hanoi. Okay, now if you want to quote the code, you know, that's fine too. Okay, so I just need to know that you understand that you have to push the return value of a call to the subroutine on the stack. All right, so what we have done at this point 
is the innermost call, okay, which is this portion here. And we have the second one here. And you can see the code is going to be similar, okay, except, you know, we got some interchange you know, of the uh, ordering of the arguments, okay, because we have to put, you know, instead of FTV, this one has FVT, and then the outermost call has VFT, okay. So we can do it the boring way, but as I said, you know, I don't want to do it the boring way, so I'm going to do uh, do this in a in a fun way, okay. So let me go ahead and explain the fun way of doing this. Okay, so we'll go back here. All right. All right, so we are now ready for the mid call to Hanoi. Okay. So we already got the last argument pushed on the stack, which also means everything is now one off from where the label is indicating. But this time, I'm, I'm going to get to F first. Okay, so we'll do LDI. Uh, register A is free again, because I, I have just pushed. Um, um, oh, this is the wrong place. Ah, wrong place to put this. Because this is the case when it is 1. So I just got to the wrong place. Okay, there we go. This is the right place to do it. All right, there we go. Okay, so now we are ready. Okay, ready to um, handle mid call to Hanoi. All right, so this time we're going to do it a fun way, um, but we have to be careful because we know that there's one extra thing on the stack, which is the return value of the innermost call to Hanoi. So at this point, um, when I use the labels, I have to remember there's one extra thing on the stack. So the way I'm going to do this is to get to the address of F first, okay? So we'll do a LDIA um, Hanoi underscore F and add AD, okay? So this time it is quite important that I remember what A has at this point. It is the address of the parameter F. And then the next three instructions is going to look a little bit mm, confusing. So we'll go ahead and do a LD, okay? You know, because once I have the address of a parameter, I can use a LD to get to the value of the parameter. So I'm going to put this one into C first, okay? So I can now say C has um, the value of parameter F. And now we're going to have some interesting stuff going on. I increment A. So by incrementing A, A is now the address of the next um, parameter. So V is the next one, and do a LD instruction here, but this time I put it into register B. So this time B has um, the value of V. There we go. And then the last one, increment A again, but this time I'm going to do a LD AA. So I will lose the address of um, F at this point, but I get to get to the value of F this time. So A now has the value of F. So the way do, the, the reason why I'm doing this is so that I don't have to do an LDI and then add AD and then LDI add AD and so on. This is a lot more efficient, okay? You know, in terms of, you know, how little code I need to get to the three parameters and have those, you know, put into uh, three different registers. But what is important here is I need to know which one to push first and then which one to push second and which one to push last. So for that, obviously I cannot remember my code. So for that, I need to look this up. So it's I have to push T first because it's the last of the three arguments, then V and then F, okay? So the sequence is T, V, F, okay? Obviously, I cannot remember that quickly, so we'll say V, T, F, okay, push in this order. There we go, because you know, if I don't write this down, I'm going to forget. All right, so we have a document D and STD, but not A necessarily, because I need to push V first. So V is in register B, this is what I push. We document D again. Oh. I need a comment, right? So let's comment. 
Okay, so this is pushing V on the stack. Decrement D, S, T, D, and next one is T. Oh, obviously this is not supposed to be T because T is in which one? Okay, I forgot something here, didn't I? Okay, this is T is, oh, this is supposed to be T, not F. Okay, I miscommented mis because T is the last of the three arguments. So when A is incremented uh, twice already, um, A would be the address of T. So when I use the load instruction, I would have loaded the value of T into register A in this last load operation. Okay, so when we need to push A, we just have to store A to where uh, the stack pointer points to. So this is for pushing T. <clears throat> and then we decrement D again, and then we STD. This time it is register C because we want to push F on the stack. All right, okay. So, you know, you can see how this code is quite a bit more compact than the previous one. So now we got all the arguments pushed. We have to once again push the return address. So that part is going to look exactly the same as before. So I will just be lazy and copy and paste it. So we'll That's too much. There we go. Okay, just that much. The other one I kind of need to, but I'll do it and explain it at the same time. There we go. Paste this part. All right. So this is my inner call, okay? And I even included the code to deallocate the five bytes used by the arguments. So at this point, register A has the yeah, register A has the return value of the mid call to um, Hanoi. And that, okay, let me go back to the C code so I can explain that. So at this point, we are done with this call. But you can see how the return value of this call becomes the last argument of the outermost call, which means the return value, which is stored in register A, now needs to be pushed on the stack. So, so I need to uh, decrement D and then st, whoops, ah, st da to push return value of mid call to Hanoi on stack. Or, well, pushing is fine, just to push that. Um, so now th we have to kind of keep track of what is on the stack at this point. So we have the the last call, the return value of the last call, but that is consumed already by the mid call. So that means we only have one extra thing sitting on the stack right now, which is the return value of the mid call, which also means everything is also just one byte off from where um, the labels indicate. So that means I can copy and paste the code again. And before I do that, okay, because I like to kind of leave behind some comments ready to handle the last or the first call to Hanoi. Okay, so first being, um, if I read the code from left to right or top to bottom, you know, this would be the first call. But in terms of the implementation, it becomes the last call, okay? All right, so for that, I can, for the most part, just repeat and, and copy and paste all of this, okay? Except for the pushing of the return value, okay? So we can copy this all the way to here. But what I need to adjust is how I push these items. So I'm going to leave behind a note for myself, okay? To do, to do fix pushing order. Okay, so I can now go back to look at how I'm supposed to be calling, uh, pushing those three. Oh, you know what? I forgot one thing. I forgot about pushing the, the one on the stack for the mid call. Okay, 
So we'll go ahead and fix that. All right, so after we push W on the stack, we need to do that, right? Mm, no. After we push F on the stack, we need to call, we, we need to push one. Okay, so I just need to find out where that is supposed to be. That is pushing the F. There we go. So this is where we need to push the one on the stack. LDI A1 decrement D STDA push one good okay so now we got one push on the stack and then now it makes me think did I remember to push N minus one on the stack with the previous one Yes, I did, except the comment was wrong, so I need to fix that. Okay, there we go. Whew. So it's all good. All right, so mm, now where am I going? Oh, right, I need to fix the order of pushing the three parameters. So with the first call, okay, it, the way I pushed the three parameters is like this, V, F, and T. Guess what? I'm just going to copy and paste it. Okay, because this way I cannot make a mistake. So we go here and then we paste that here. Okay, so this way, you know, I know exactly the order of pushing V, F, and T. All right, so V is in register B. Oh, but I have to push it in reverse order. So I have to push T first. So I'm going to push T, which is in register A, and then I push F, which is in register C, and then I push V, which is in register B. There we go. All right. So it's kind of easy peasy, except I forgot that this is supposed to be a one plus here because um, we got one extra thing sitting on the stack, which is the return value of the mid call. Which means I also forgot it here, which is one plus here, because um, for this one we got the um, the last call of Hanoi or the yeah. So we have the return value of the last call of Hanoi pushed uh, right at this point of time. So that's why you know um, the offset they're all off by one. All right. So what do we do now? Um, we do the call, we deallocate the arguments, and we are good to go because the return value of the first call is the return value that we want to use for this particular invocation. So there's nothing else to do. So I would say that the program is done, which is um, may which it may or may not run. Okay. Oh wait wait we got main to do too. I forgot about main. All right, so let's work. Out, let's work on main. Um, and main is right here. Okay, so we'll copy and paste that too <coughs> into the assembly code into right here. All right, so we're gonna comment out everything like so. Oops. There we go. All right. All right. So we got. We have to define a few things. Um, we are going to define uh, buff length. Okay. Buff length is defined to be eight, which is the macro definition. Okay. And then we have to define the offset of where we can find things. But but since we only have one local variable buffer. So, and we do not have any parameters. There's no return address either. So this one is going to be where the stack pointer is supposed to be pointing to after we do the allocation. So that's why it has an offset of zero. And because we have local variables, we need to compute uh, var size. So we have main local var size. It is really just going to be buffer and then buff length plus, OK? 
okay that you that will tell us how many bytes we need to use for all of the local variables okay um, I think that's all we need to do and then once we get that done the we have to do the actual allocation so the actual allocation is done by LDI a uh, main underscore local var size and then we have to uh, remove this much subtract this much from the stack pointer you know, this is for allocating for local variables and this is you know this comment is actually needed because we're doing something with the stack um, and then we have to reverse this before we get to the halt instruction to deallocate all of that stuff okay but to deallocate is to change the subtract to an add and to say the allocate instead of allocating all right so now we are ready to implement this particular um, instruction so this is the one time where you know it makes more sense to compute the left hand side first before we compute the right hand side because the right hand side is pretty easy okay it's just a constant of zero but the left hand side is a little bit longer okay so we have to deal with the left hand side first all right so let's do that LDI a um, buffer and then add AD. So after this is done, A is the address of buffer. But this time there's no LDAA before we push it on the stack because when you are passing an array in C or C++, you're, all, you're always passing by reference. You can never pass an array by value. So this is what we need to push. So we say decrement D ST a and this is for pushing buffer on the stack and then the rest are all constants so, so we got two one zero and then a three so we have um, LDI a two decrement D S T D A this is for pushing two on the stack and the rest I mean, we just have a whole bunch of copy and paste because we are pushing a bunch of constants on the stack. So the next one is one. So the zero, one, two, you know, we could have used like, you know, anything from zero to 15. Um, what they, what those really are, um, are identifier of the poles. So, you know, I just, you know, design, decide to use zero to identify the from pole. Um, one to um, identify the via pole, and then two to uh, determine uh, to identify the 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 two post the destination. So now we got the three pushed on the stack, and then we got the three also to push on the stack, because the three is the number of disks. Okay, and in this particular version of the C code, it is the first um, argument, so that's why it is pushed last. And now we need to push the return address. So we have um, LDI A dot six plus decrement D S T D A. This is for pushing the return address on stack. And then we can do the JMPI to Hanoi. And then when it returns, we have to um, deallocate the five bytes. So we can LDI B, don't use A because A has the return value from the subroutine call. So we have to preserve A, but we can use B, LDI B5, add DB. So we're adding five to the stack pointer to deallocate the arguments. All right, so now we have the entire um, left-hand side done and the right-hand side is a zero. So let's do that. Okay, so LDI B zero, and I'll remind myself why I do this. This is the right hand side, and the STAB is going to accomplish the whole thing. So we're going to, um, I mean, I can now just copy and paste the C statement because now we are actually doing this statement here. We're using the return value of Hanoi as an address. 
and then we store the zero at that address. Basically, the, what this what this zero is is the null terminator for quote unquote the string. Okay, that's that's basically basically what this zero is. All right, so I think this is it. All right, so let's go ahead and um, put this code in the assembler and find out what we're gonna get there. Okay, so we get to here, get rid of the entire column A, and then paste. And we want to scan for errors that the assembler can catch. So, so far so good. Nothing, nothing. Wow, okay, I am surprised. All right. So the second thing, I'm just curious, okay? The second thing is to find out how long is this program, okay? So the program keeps going, 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 going. <laughs> All right. So the program ends at location C9, and this is probably as, uh, as, a, as big of a program as we have encountered, okay? So now the question is, well, Tech, are we really sure that we got enough stack space to run this code, okay? Well, C9 is, um, let's see, it's 12 times 16 plus nine. Let's, okay, my math is bad. So 12 times 16 is 160, Two plus nine is two hundred and one. Okay, so that's two hundred and one bytes. So we still got about fifty bytes left. Okay, let's call it forty bytes. So each invocation has how many bytes? Let's count. Each invocation has um, the five bytes for the arguments, one more byte for the return address. So every invocation takes up six bytes. Okay. And the depth of the recursion is based on the number of disks. And we have, um, I think, three disks in this time. So it's three times six, which is 18. Um, and then plus one, because you know, we, um, we, we get, you know, as we do the recursion, we'll push one parameter first. So depending on your code, okay, it may be you know, plus one or plus two or plus three. So we have to um, get that, you know, in, put that into consideration. So we have, let's see, nine-ish bytes per call. And then we have um, a maximum depth of three levels. And then the last one is going to have to call rec as well. So we got 30 bytes plus, you know, what rec needs, which is three bytes for the arguments, one byte for the return address which makes four, so 35-ish you know, bytes would do it. Um, so that means we can do it, okay? We do it. There's enough space to run this code. I just did something that's really stupid because I, I was going through the base conversion of C9 in my head and the answer is staring at me in the face the whole time. But I got it right. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of like, uh, the silver lining, you know, in this whole thing, you know, even though I was stupid enough to do the manual calculation, well, at least it turned out to be correct. Okay, so I can feel a little bit good about that. Okay, so it's time to run this code. Okay, let's find out whether it works or not. So we get file, uh, download, CSV. So as I kind of explained in, um, the exam. Um, I'm not really expecting um, people to get this program to work. So if you tried it out and it didn't seem to work, no worries. Okay, that is not needed to get full credit. So there we go. And then we need to. Okay, I'm just. I still haven't written that script to run this automatically because it is just too handy to do it like this. If this were a lot more painful, I probably would have written the script, but it's not too painful yet. So, yeah, everything is either deadline or pain driven. 
All right, so we are running the code and it complains about it. image file, yes, invalid format header. Hmm. Oh, okay, I got the wrong sheet. Okay, all right. Oh, okay, because I'm at the wrong place, got to go to RAM file first. Yeah, occasionally I make mistakes like that. I think this is the first time I make that mistake this semester. There we go. Replace it. Okay, now we can run it. There we go. All right. So let's hope. Oh, okay. Well, I was, I was, I was not hoping that it would return because you know if I make a dumb mistake with the recursion and it ends up to be endless, you know, it it should take a little bit longer to do this. All right, so now it is the moment of truth. We go to the trace analyzer to see whether the program did what it was supposed to. So we go to here, file, import, um, upload, and fx.tsv, okay, tab separated file tab separate a value file. Okay, we place current sheet, tab, no, import data. Okay, so we'll let it sit for a while. I don't see who is here. Oh, okay. Catherine is uh, one of my um, older students. Well, not older students, but students from my past semester. There we go. All right, so everything is done. We get to summary. We only got two eight hundred twenty-one lines of trace. I mean that seems pretty short for something like this. Well, let's go find out. Okay, we go to eight twenty-one. Whoops, too much. Row eight twenty-one, and hmm, it's not looking good because the stack pointer is not back to zero. The last update is not going back to zero. So it's not good, okay? So the program basically, um, the stack overran into the code space and it basically just crashed the code. All right, so I'm looking at the time right now and I'm looking at how long this recording has been. Unfortunately, I don't see it in the recording. Okay, but that's fine. I'm, I can just keep going. There we go. All right, so we'll just keep going. So now we need to debug this program. So this step is kind of optional. You know, you don't have to get this program to run, but I really want to get it to run. So I want to see, you know, whether it works or not. So now the question is, how can I use the trace to find out whether the program works or not? First thing is when I get to Hanoi, do I have the right things on the stack, okay? So I need to go back to the assembler, go to the assemble tab, and then find out where is, what is the label of Hanoi. So that would be, the label of Hanoi is, there are many ways to find it, this is one way. It is 1A. Okay, so I need to go back to the trace analyzer and go all the way to the top because I need to find out the first time I get to location 1A, um, you know, what is on the stack. Um, so we got 1A, right? So this is main. Okay, so this is main. Main, 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 main. And then we get to 1A. Okay, so this is 1A. So I need to find out what is on the stack at this point. And I can only tell what is on the stack by um, um, what I have overwritten on the stack. So I got this F2 here, um, and that should be the return address. So let me, I need to remember this, okay, on the side. Um, and it's not a very good idea to overwrite this document so my advice is to use something like a um, like a post-it, okay? You know, but a digital one. So I'm gonna use this digital post-it to help me keep track of this stuff here. 
and I'll make this always on top so this way you know um, it has a certain transparency to it so I can still see through it if I need to so F2 has the return address so that means F3 has the first um, parameter which is supposed to be 3 F4 should be 0 F5 should be 1 F6 should be a 2 and an F7 should be the address of buffer uh, which is supposed to be F8 okay so this is what I'm expecting on the stack so I need to go back to all the stack operations you know, all the stack writes okay and match up all of those okay F4 is a 0 F5 is a 1 F6 is a 2 and then F7 is a F8 so we this is confirmed okay very good all right so now that we know all of this is confirmed the next thing we need to do is to confirm that the conditional part is working correctly because if I have an endless recursion one of the reason why it's doing that can be because the conditions or the way I check the conditions is not correct all right so let's check that um, to check that I have to look at um, Basically, we have to load this, you know, into register into one of the registers, and then we see whether it is a zero or not. Okay, and this is what happens there. Okay, it is loaded here, and then this is the AND operation, and the Z flag is not set. Okay, and as a result, this is the conditional branch, and um, the conditional branch is going to say. If it is a zero, we branch, and since it is not, we do not branch, and we end up at location 21. So the way we check for zero is fine. Okay, so I'll write it down here. Uh, checking for zero is fine. Okay, and now we need to check for one. So we put a one into register B, and then we have a uh, CMP CMPAB instruction. And because it is not one, so the Z flag should be cleared as well. And as a result, on um, at location 24, which is the JZI instruction, it did not branch, and instead it goes into um, the recursive case. Okay, so I'm gonna write here. Okay, checking for one seems to be fine. All right, so here's the recursive case, which is the complex case, right? So the recursive case needs to do the innermost or the last call first. And the last call is pushing, let's see, it's pushing W on the stack. Okay, so if I were to comment what is, which one is W, okay, so this is W, um, this is our um, T, this is our V, and this is our F, and this is our N on the stack. Okay, so knowing that we want to see whether it's pushing W on the stack, and to confirm that we just need to look at the stack operation. Okay, so that is correct. Okay, so we are pushing um, F1 gets F8, which is you know W. And that is correct. Okay, so now we're expecting F0, which is the next location to get. Um, let me get back to the C code first. So the next one should be V, which is one. So we should be seeing that being pushed on the stack. So we look at the next stack write operation. It is pushing a one on the stack. Okay, so that is correct. This is the via uh, thing, and then we then. We go to E9, oh, EF, and that should be T, which is uh, 2 on the stack. Okay, and now we get back to the trace analyzer to confirm that. Is that a 2? Yep. Okay, the next one down is EE, which should be the from, which is F, okay, which is 0, 0. It won't show on the stack here um, because. Um, that memory location was a zero to begin with, and so overwriting it with zero zero is not going to show up. Okay. Oh, it does show up. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. 
kind of interesting because it's not supposed to show up. That is strange. No, wait, it does show up because there are activities um, on the memory bus. Okay, so that that's why it shows up. Okay, that's good. Um, and then we have n minus one, you know, on the stack. So we have e d being n minus one, which then should be zero, two, which is the n minus one from the invocation of this from this particular invocation's perspective. And it got that. Okay, very good. And then we have a recursive call. Okay, at this point. So the next one is the return address, which is four b. So e c is four b, which is the return address okay and we can confirm that too let's confirm that first so we want to look at location 4b and see whether that is supposed to be the return address so 4b oh it is not the correct place to return to so 4b is wrong hmm all right so because 4b is right here and that is one that's two bytes past no i should say three bytes past where um oh okay i see why because i was dumb 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 okay now that i see this code here where's the jmpi instruction it's not there okay well that means i have to fix the source code Okay, because I forgot the JMPI in a call. Okay, so always good to jot down the note here. Okay, forgot the JMPI in recursive call to Hanoi. Okay, so now we look for the place to fix it because we're dealing with the last call. So it would be at the earlier part. And here we go. All right, so we push the return address on the stack, and then we need to have a JMPI to Hanoi here to do the actual call. Without that, we are not actually calling, okay? And that makes me think that I really should be counting again, so I'm just double checking. This is zero, one, and then this is two, three, no, zero, Okay, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so that should be correct. All right, so, but since I'm here, I'm gonna check whether the rest has the call, you know, the JMP instruction, JMPI instruction. And as it turns out, they are all missing the JMPI instruction. All right, well, at least I'm consistent. <laughs> There's always a way to save, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna miss it too here because there's no way I, yeah, yeah, push the return address and then forget to do an actual jump. JMPI to Hanoi. All right. All right, so let's do this all over again. Go back to assemble, go to source erase the entire column A. So the program is now uh, six bytes longer than before. I don't think, you know, we are running out of stack space, but we'll see, right? All right, so it's fully assembled. And then we go to the assemble tab and just to make sure that this time we got the return address specified correctly. So the return address is 4B and 4B is indeed the correct place to go back to. Yes, so that is good to know. <clears throat> and now we go to the RAM file, download it again, and then we just do the trace again. So we download CSV. And we want to save file. Okay, call fx.csv. Replace. Go back to the command prompt. Run it again. Ah, this time it looks about right because it takes a little bit longer this time. Um, and then we switch back to the trace analyzer. Go back to here. And we want to import. There we go. 
upload the TSV file. Specify replace current sheet tab and do not convert text. Okay. And then wait for the formula lead to be all recalculated. Okay, go to summary. This is this is looking good, okay? It's looking good because it is supposed to be a little bit longer. And then we go to analysis and let's be optimistic first and just go straight to the end which is 1703 I'm pretty sure there's a faster way to do this to go to a particular cell oh don't it's not working okay so that is not working um well let's go ahead and debug this okay we go all the way back to the beginning and once again, we want to get to the entry point of the subroutine Hanoi. Okay, so that's at location 1A again. That has not changed. All right, so we look for 1A. And we know how far the program went last time. So we can at least go to 4B-ish. There we go. Okay. So we get a 4.9, it goes back to 1A, so we know the recursion is working correctly. There we go. And this is our return address. So we got that part, you know, um, working correctly. And now this time we, um, this is my N, which is 2. And it's going to do the recursion again. So we can just kind of go all the way to the recursive call because we know it is supposed to call recursively. So this is the recursive call and it's now a 1 where it should end the recursion by calling um, rec, R-E-C. So we'll um, have what it pushes on the stack. So let's check that. Okay, so it's pushing 2 on the stack um, which is the to pole, and then the zero zero, which is the from pole, and then the address where I want to store it, which is F8. So everything is looking good. And then when it gets to the subroutine, okay, the subroutine is uh, starting at location zero three. And what it should do is to put a byte at location F8. It put the byte 02 into location F8, and that is correct. Register A should be um, F9 when it returns. Okay, so far so good. And it is supposed to return to, let's check this return address of A0 and make sure that is correct. <coughs> So we're looking at A0, which is here. And that is indeed the right place, okay? Because this is right after we call uh, record. All right, so after that, it will undo the three bytes on the stack. Whatever is left in register A is the return value of Hanoi itself. And then Hanoi itself should return to location 4B, okay? So that is correct so far. And register A, all this time, register A should have value F9. Okay, so everything is good. And now we push that on the stack. This is for undoing the, um, deallocating the arguments on the stack. And now we push F9 on the stack and then we push the other three arguments on the stack so we have 0 2 which is the two pole and then we have the uh, via pole this is the from pole and the number of disk is one and this is the mid call by the way this is the mid call and then we continue execution at the subroutine at 1a and the return address this time is 6 Eight. Okay, and then we get the N here, 
and then we determine that um, we do not need to do a recursion and this time we do the re uh, call to record okay so we should call um, the record by pushing three arguments on the stack so we got 0 2 0 0 and the location F9 push on the stack and we know record is working correctly um, and this is the return address okay so we perform the call and this is record doing its thing and the register A should become FA this is the return value and then we retrieve the return address to continue execution so we get back to one uh, we get back to A0 and that terminates this particular call to Hanoi so Hanoi is going to return to its caller which is at location 68 so we'll double check that location 68 is uh, the starting point or the place where the mid call ends so we go to location 68 okay 68 is here so that is indeed correct okay this is where we get back from the mid call so that we can move on to um, the first call all right so everything is good so far and then we are supposed to push that on the stack we push the return value of um, the mid call on the stack and then we push the arguments okay so we have the via from and to being pushed on the stack and then we have oh okay we are we are missing one of the arguments we are missing I think we're missing um, n minus one okay all right so we're missing n minus one we forgot to push n minus one let me show you what I mean by that we are forgetting about this one we push T, F, and V, but we forgot to push N minus 1 on the stack before we call Hanoi one last time. All right, so let's fix that. Okay, so this is where we push. Um, we got T, we got F, and then we got V. That's it. Nope, no, 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 that's, that's wrong. That's not the recursive one. This is the recursive one. And this is the last call. Um, so after we push F on the stack, we have to push N minus one, okay? Remember to push N minus one, duh. Okay, all right, so LDI Hanoi underscore N. Oh, I put it into register A. So now we need to be careful how many bytes are on the stack. So we got the last argument. So we got four bytes on the stack at this point. Um, so it's a four plus in this case. So depending on the ordering of the arguments, specifically where the recursive call is within um, the calls, how the calls are nested, that really determines you know where you know what this number is supposed to be so your number can be very different from mine and you know i think there are one two three at least three variations in this case all right so this should be the correct address of n so we add ad so that a is the address of n ld a, A so this way A is the actual value of N then we use the decrement A so that A is N minus 1 and now we can push it on the stack so we got decrement D S T D A there we go so without this extra push you know, or this extra item push on the stack um, what happens is the call Lee you know still thinks it is pushed because everything is off by one byte and it would be using um, F as if it is n minus 1 and that's why everything is going to be off okay you know because um, you know it would definitely just do the wrong thing and the worst part of that is when 
the recursive call is done, coming back to here, it will clear 5 bytes on the stack when only 4 bytes were used for arguments. So by the time we get to the return code all the way down here, um, it won't be loading the actual return address anymore and it will just kind of jump back to a place that is based on you know one of the arguments not based on the return address so it's going to be you know going to the wrong place and the program doesn't work all right so now we can do it one more time control a control c go back to the assembler go back to the source code copy and paste replace the entire thing and then we go to RAM file download again as CSV okay overwrite it and then go back to the command line run the code again alright this time it takes even longer which is even more promising <laughs> Let me get back to trace, go to sheet one, and then we import. So you can see, you know, the it is it's kind of tedious, okay, you know, because there's a lot of detail that you have to remember to do. And I have to admit that I am not a particularly careful person. So, you know, a lot of times I you know, just kind of miss all the little things that make it that makes a difference that's kind of make it interesting from a certain perspective you know, because I actually get to debug the program now so now it has twice as many lines okay it's <laughs> this is good okay so we get to uh, what 37 34 34 17 okay so we'll get to that okay I want to see if there's a quick way to get there so let's see none, none I can see here hmm. 34 something right okay almost there there we go and ta-ta okay stack pointer is back to zero very good so now we need to look at all the content in RAM and see if they resemble what they're supposed to be okay so what we need to do is to go back to online GDB and rerun online GDB because we are basically running exactly the same program except in assembly. So the content of buffer should be the same. So I'm going to do printf slash x buffer. Oops. Oh, because I haven't run yet. There we go. There we go. So this is what we're expecting at the buffer. I'm putting this in my um, post-it. So F8 should get uh, 0, 2. F9 should get 0, 1. FA should get 2, 1. FB should get 0, 2. FC should get 1, 0. <coughs> And then FD should get 1, 2. FE should get um, 0, 2 again. And FF should get 0, 0. All right, so let's double check. All right, so we go back to the trace analyzer. And we only look up column C. So we can see we are storing the 0, 0. And then the zero two, which is here, and then the previous one should be one two. These are all uh, from the recursive calls, you know, pushing and popping stuff. Oh, wait, there we go. Okay, it's putting a one zero into FD. That doesn't seem right. Okay, or am I reading it wrong? Okay, this is a one zero. 
and this is a 1, 2, so we got it reversed. Okay, it's not entirely right. So it, that probably has to do with, you know, just pushing the parameters incorrectly. But we'll see. We'll see what the next one is. See what it puts into location FC. There we go. So FC also gets a 1, 0. But FD, where it's supposed to get 1, 2, it's also getting one zero, so that is telling me that the um, it's not passing the arguments correctly. Where it is supposed to be passing uh, T, it passed F instead. Okay, so let me write down my suspicion. Okay, passing um, F instead of T. All right. So let's go back to FB and see if this is a pattern. Okay. That's part of the other portion of the stack. All right, so this is FB. It's, it's using a zero. It's putting a zero one instead of a zero two. So I'm pretty sure this has to do with um, passing the arguments in the wrong order. Okay. So one of the calls is passing the arguments using the incorrect, or passing the incorrect one. Okay, FA is getting a 2-1, so that one is correct. All right, so we'll do one last uh, round of debugging, and this time we're just looking at the ordering of the arguments. Okay, so the innermost is FTV. Now, one way to debug this you know, relatively easily is to reduce the number. Um, instead of using um, N being 3, if I use N being 2, that will help me um, you know, kind of look at the trace and be able to locate a problem more quickly. Um, but instead of doing that, let's just you know, analytically check this. So I'm going to write down on my post-it here. Oh, you guys cannot see the entire thing because my head is blocking it. Mm. OK, so let's do this. So we need to push it in reverse order. So it's F, T, and F. And sorry, it's V, T, and F for the, inner, for the last call. OK, so we'll check that first. <coughs> and this is the last call. So we got V, T, F. OK, so that is correct. And then the mid call, since I have to push it in the reverse order, is TVF for the mid call. Okay, so now we look for the mid call. And this is the mid call, V TVF, right? <laughs> I got it wrong, I think. And then this is the VTF. Okay. I have to push it in reverse order. So this is supposed to be T V F. Okay, so I got this one wrong. So this should be A and this should be B. And let me just double check. Okay, C has F, B has V, A has T. That is correct. So if I want to push T first, T is here. So I need to push T first, <coughs> and then I need to push V, and V is supposed to be in B, and then F is last. Okay, might as well check the uh, the last one too, okay, or the first call. 
since I'm here already. So for the first call, since we have to push it backwards, so it's T, F, and then V for the first call. And we'll double check that. Okay, so we check that here. So it is <laughs> it is also wrong, I think. Man, I got it kind of flipped. It's supposed to be T F V. Hmm. All right. So, or did I just forgot to change the comment? Register a, there a register A does have T. Register C has F, and then register B has V. So T F V is correct. So it's the mid call that got it wrong. Okay. All right. So one more time. <coughs> Get to RAM file, download it. It's a CSV file. Oops. Ah, I call it VX. Fine. It's just that I have to change this to VX this time instead of FX. Okay. And then we go back to the trace analyzer. And check that. File import upload TSV. <coughs> Replace tab no. Okay. We'll let it do its magic. And same number of lines, which is not surprising. That really is supposed to happen. And this time we want to look at um, what it puts into location FA. And it is correct this time. So we'll, we'll check again for FB. So what we'll do is we're going to do some cool trick here, which is going to search. Um, let's see. Find and replace. But this time we'll use a regular expression. There we go. So what we are looking for is starting with uh, uppercase F or star. Um, I need to escape the star because otherwise it becomes um, any number of the previous item. Okay, and then we have F, and the so we have eight, nine, and then A to F here and then an equal symbol. So that's what we're looking for is F8 all the way to FF, you know, and we want to see what we put into those locations. And here we go, find. So F8 is 2, F9 is 1, FA is 2, 1, FB is 0, 2, FC is 1, 0, FD is 1, 2, FE is 0, 2, FF is 0, 0. Everything matches. So this is indeed the answer to the final exam. Phew! So I'm done. I am done here. Um, I'm going. To, I'm, I, I will send you guys a copy of this. Well, I'm, I'll send you the video instead. Um, so for those of you who are curious, you can go ahead and watch it. And obviously, you know, I have already talked about what I will be looking for when I'm grading this. And it's going to take a while because I'm going to have to actually read your code to find what I need to find. And that's going to take a little bit of time because I'm certainly hoping that not the entire class will turn in one single program because that makes grading very easy. But that also tells me that uh, people do not work on their own you know, exams individually. but. If people work on their exams individually, I'm gonna. It, it will take a long time. It will take him some time to read through all of this. It it it. This is 
more difficult to grade than English writing because you know every single instruction, every single operand matters. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to post this video as soon as I'm done with this, and I hope you guys will have a nice holiday and break. Um, and be restful. All right, stay safe and healthy. I will see some of you next semester if you're taking CISP 440.